It's all good. It's all good. Everything is moving forward and changing exactly how it's supposed to be. Everyone's experiencing things exactly how it's supposed to be. But there is a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes. And it's a massive, massive collective. And that's why Joanne wants to always try and honor the people who are working. She does honor the beings who are doing the work behind the scenes to help humanity, to help the people. And who are these beings that do things behind the scenes? Us. Okay. How many of us are there to make this happen? How high can you count and then times that by how high you can count? Wow. So it looks like this is a pretty big show then. Yeah. Joanne's laughing because she's like, I think I can count to about a hundred joints. <laughs> <laughs> but it's much more than that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. That's an important job. It's really impactful because it's like, there's this ripple effect. Imagine the biggest ocean that you can see and it's completely flat and there is no waves and you drop a pebble. And the pebble is so profound that the ripple effect ripples out and out and out and out and out. And, out. and what causes this ripple effect? It's like the awakening of humanity's consciousness. Okay self-aware and how is this happening so much stuff is happening to force people to wake and awaken like what everyone's belief systems are being challenged at every level no human is not going to be triggered and they have to look through their triggers to move profoundly forward Religion is going to be challenged. Politics are going to be challenged. Healthcare is going to be challenged. The environment's going to be challenged. Any one, any single one person who's an adult who gives a fuck about trying to be an adult who wants to be educated and what's happening in the world because that's what growing ups feel like they need to do. They need to be aware of the news, be bracing themselves for what's coming next. And they all know what's coming next, but they don't know. They're afraid. They're afraid. They're afraid. They're so fucking terrified and afraid that something is going to get them. But what they don't understand is that what is coming to get them is enlightenment. Wow. How can we take away the fear? We can't do shit. They have to do it for themselves. Okay. They have to work within themselves to realize that what they've been told is lies. They have to start thinking for themselves. They have to get themselves out of the box, out of the apartments, out of their homes. They have to start connecting to the communities. They need to have cause they need to start rallying together they actually need to have something in common with their fellow man to go no we don't want to vote for trump no we don't want these viruses no 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 and they feel so suddenly outraged and they want to live and they want to protest that it actually causes them to connect profoundly to others even like-minded people even to total strangers where they feel like they have one thing in common it is about having a conversation even if it's about the virus that's happening they are talking to strangers about it they're afraid together but what is happening is they feel like they can talk to strangers and connect profoundly and they both recognize the fear that they have and then they both will say something positive like hope we don't get it we should be protected we know a plan and it's about changing their fear systems. They will start talking about the flu virus. They will start talking about a whole lot of stuff. And it's because they are talking to people and they all have the same vibration, connecting with each other differently than they ever have before, even though it's fear and they are still connecting and that's always going to be greater than the fear itself. 
And so that's why we've been pushing them, is because we wanted them to fucking talk. They don't talk about the fucking good things. They only talk about the drama, the fear, the worry, the tragedies, the natural disasters, all the things that they're fucking so addicted to. They're, like, they're addicted to the drama of it. So while we don't like that, we knew that's how we could play them. <laughs> we find that very funny. <laughs> Can you see how the awakening will happen? Do you guys have a plan up there? So it is just like a contagious thing. One person has an experience, say for the flu virus, for example. The flu vaccine, which they get pushed, has made people so sick, so sick so sick they know it intuitively and this is what scares them the most is that the vaccine and the flu the coronavirus they know something's not right there is this disbelief there is this fear and when it was produced into the awareness of humanity a lot of disinformation of the whole thing was also released it will be uncovered it will make people wake up and realize that the fear they had been under was just a facade and the connections that they had with the people when they were talking about this still remains but the fear will drop when more information gets out truth always gets out and while we have been working on the earth to create the higher vibrations to help humanity have a kickstart everyone is naturally waking up that's amazing of all the connections that you guys are doing behind the scenes to make this happen it has to happen the earth is changing it is shifting it is needing our support humanity is needing our support and by now because we have all worked so hard with humanity we all have chips in this game and this is why i referenced our ship as being a casino black and white chica thing it's all the mix it's all all of us combined it's a lot of stuff there's a lot of support, there's a lot of people watching, a lot of beings watching this a situation because we're curious of how this is going to go because it's exciting to have a successful transition. It's important for so many things. What are those things? The people who have got different DNA, they need to go back to their home. So, we are nurturing them here on Earth for them to have all these experiences. And when they go back to their own homes, they will be the elders. They will be able to share their experiences with basically all tourists on this planet eventually we will all be going home where is home the stars just us the stars the stars all of them all of them have a stake here some investments interests it's like a weird thing that's happened a civilization has sent one volunteer to go and explore this crazy thing called Earth. Someone got stuck 
And it's taken them a little while and they come back and they're slightly broken, damaged and traumatized. But we heal them, but we want to learn from the experiences. Definitely. How do you heal them? Each individual civilization has a way to be able to heal the fragmented souls. And it's about just understanding. Understanding what? Um, the relatively simple but also intriguingly interesting existence of the human experience. And when we go back like elders to the stars, how are we going to put into place all of this knowledge that we've learned from Earth? It's like a storage container. I don't know if we download our experiences onto something, but it's going to be like observed. It's like if you go to a museum and you, mm -hmm. or you go to a library okay. and you see all of these books, uh -huh. the human experience for that being will be put a shelf into a book but it will be the whole human experience of the whole everything will be downloaded in that one book and most civilizations or most beings kind of have some form of a library of all the different stuff it's just like how when you go traveling and you buy a guide of the town or the country that you're traveling it's kind of like a little souvenir the whole human experience is collected for souvenirs for different civilizations. And of course, I'm not speaking about all of them because some don't care. Some are not invested. Others are. The more compassionate beings are. So that's why they are so here. That is why they are still here. That is why they are still helping. Wow. They actually just came for tourism. They actually just came to see, sightsee the earth. And explore it. It was in a really good location in the universe and it got very busy. Okay. I think things changed. But I think some beings felt compassion more than others and more intrigue and interest. Are they doing anything differently? Sorry. The beings that are feeling compassionate and more intrigued. Oh, the still the other ones that are just like watching over and having more direct contact with the planet, with some of the beings on the earth. Okay. They're more interactive. But not all the beings are aware of it. No. The earth was a that's just why your lifetime you are where you're just collecting your human body and bringing it up. How do you do that? How we travel. It's just, it's energetically. And what happens after that? We're just download the information of all the emotions you're experiencing, all the stuff that's happening, not just your own personal stuff, but everything you've ever been exposed to. It's like every time you connect with someone, even if it's just meeting them, even if it's just like walking past them, you collect all of their experience as well. You're like this magnet of information. So while we aren't necessarily interested in Edith's experiences in the human lifetime. It's more the entire collection of all of the information that she collects from people. And what information is being collected from people? Just daily life, experiences, feelings, interactions, trauma, everything. It's everything. Yeah. We don't find it very interesting, the actual information, but it's just trying to handle what you guys are doing. Mm.